Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines and this is our review of Google Home. So what exactly is Google Home you might ask? Well, it's pretty much just a speaker with Google Assistant built in. While that sounds simple, and for the most part this product is pretty simple, the depth that the combination of a standalone speaker together with Google Assistant really brings some magic to the equation. Let's start by taking a look at the design, which is curated in a way that fits with almost anything in your home. Shipping in a single color combination, most of the unit is covered in a simple white plastic while the base is made of a gray fabric. It's this base that brings visual customization to the unit as Google sells six other colors in total. Three of these colors are fabric and come in mango, marine, and violet colors, while the other three colors are metal and come in carbon, copper, and snow. On top of the unit you'll find a soft multicolor LED array in a circle pattern, which is flanked by a pair of far-field microphones, all of which sit at about a 35 degree angle, sloping down towards the front of the unit. While Google Home's circular base might make you think it's designed to operate at any angle, there technically is a front and back of the device. On the back you'll find a single button to mute the microphones up top, a handy feature if you don't want assistant hearing you all the time. Aside from that, the unit is brilliantly weighted towards the bottom for maximum stability, and the power cord is situated in a way that it won't accidentally become unplugged. That's a good thing because there's no battery inside Google Home, which means it's designed to be stationary. That base you're looking at is actually magnetically connected by a twist-off mechanism, and it's easily exchangeable with any of the other bases. Underneath that base you'll find a 2-inch speaker with a pair of 2-inch radiators, all of which produce some incredibly beautiful and full sound. On average, I left the volume at around 40% and heard it around my house without any kind of issue, and I found that anything over 60% was actually a little too loud and became overly distracting. The quality is seriously impressive though with deep bass that you can feel and hear and a range of audio that's nothing short of fantastic. Google Assistant's realistic voice shines on the Google Home speaker and it's any wonder why Google packs such good hardware inside the home. So one of the things I like to do while I'm around the house is play some music. So we can just do, okay Google, play some music. Alright, here's some music on Google Play Music. Okay Google. Play some music on Sutric Living Room. All right, music from Google Play Music, playing on Sutric Living Room. As you likely already know, Google Assistant is the next generation of Google Search, designed to interact with you more like a human being and less like an AI-based assistant. Natural language is the name of the game here, and anything from asking it to go back to the beginning of the album that's currently playing, to querying it for facts is fair game. For me, I found Google Home was most comfortably placed in the kitchen, where it easily gave me measurements and conversions, a way to set multiple timers by name, like if I wanted to set one for pizza and I wanted to set one for something else. So here's another example for you. Let's say you're in the kitchen and you're cooking or something like that, and you run out of an ingredient and you realize that you're going to need it next time around. So you can just say, okay Google. Add milk to my grocery list. Okay, I've added milk to your shopping list. And that's about it. Now it has a little list in Google Keep, and then you can always reference that anytime you need to go to the store and pick us something up. It's likely we'll see integration with something like Netflix soon enough, allowing you to cast to any Google Cast enabled device like a Chromecast or TVs and speakers with this functionality built in. There were a couple of really impressive moments with Google Home and Google Assistant as well, as I found myself all the way across the house barely even yelling for it and it could still hear me and understand me well. These are some seriously impressive mics on top and they work really really well despite there only being two. So one of my personal favorite commands is actually sending YouTube videos to the TV. So let's go ahead and do something like this. Okay Google, send the latest Android Headlines video to Sutrich Living Room. Sure, playing latest Android Headlines videos from YouTube on Sutrich Living Room. So as you can see, the language is pretty incredible. It actually figures out that Android Headlines is our channel, it figures out the name of my Chromecast, and it pronounces all that stuff pretty much right too, which is pretty darn impressive to say the least. Just to give you an idea of how good these mics are, take a listen to an actual sample from Google Home and check out all the background noise that it actually is able to filter out and still get the command correct. Okay Google, cast the latest Android headlines video from YouTube onto Sutric Living Room. And then let's say you want to replay the video on the TV or something, you can just say, okay Google, start the video on my TV over again. And there it goes, there's, there's really no delay at all, which is also really impressive. It does these commands almost instantly. Speaking of Google Cast enabled speakers, one of the most surreal moments with Google Home might have been the ability to use all Google Cast supported speakers and Google Home units around the house 
as an interconnected set of speakers. As long as you've got those audio-only cast devices tied to your Google account, Google Home can interact with them and sync what's currently playing, making wires through walls a thing of the past. This is done both by Google Assistant's deep integration with your personal Google account, as well as the excellent Google Home app, which actually used to be called the Chromecast and then the Google Cast app. While this one has changed names a few times, it essentially just got a new set of features this time around, helping you easily manage data handled by Google Home, as well as a way to easily interconnect your Google Cast devices. There's even interconnection with third-party smart home appliances like Samsung SmartThings, Philips Hue, and the veritable Nest brand of products, not to mention tie-ins with apps like IFTTT for some crazy home automation recipes, or applets as they now call it. Folks looking to connect all these things in an easy way and control everything by voice will be simply thrilled with Google Home. And anyone looking for a great way to cast music to a seriously fantastic speaker anywhere in their home will also find Google Home a great product. You can't take this one on the go or set it wirelessly in the middle of the table like some other competitor products, but the customization and beauty of Google Home paired with the smarts of Google Assistant make the 129 bucks you'll spend on Google Home one seriously fantastic bargain this year. We give this one a big thumbs up and definitely recommend it. We hope you enjoyed that review and will subscribe to us for more content. Check us out on your favorite social media network and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 Android-based news coverage. Thanks for watching and until next time.